welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you, whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm, I'm Lita. I'm Ron. Oh, yeah, you stepped all over Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Ron. Sorry, Ron. Oh, it's me. I'm Ron. I'm here. <laughs> I'm Jean Marie. And collectively, we are the hosts of Podcast DX. On today's show, we are speaking with Wilder. Wilder is from Kentucky. I found him on TikTok, and he is going to be sharing his story, which is a, a bit of a heartbreaker, a heart-wrenching story. But thank you for joining us today, Wilder. Yeah, thank we you for having it. me. I'm excited. Well, we've been following you on TikTok. TikTok. Gosh, I can't even say it. You can tell I'm not a millennial. Um, and we're huge fans. Yes, definitely. Oh, wow. Thank you. So, Wilder, this is Ron again. Um Let's just jump right into this. Uh, yeah. What can you tell us and that our listeners about the events that led up to your diagnosis? And also, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma, also called um, worms? You're very right? close. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma. So it is a soft tissue cancer. And anywhere you are soft and squishy, you can get this cancer. Um, and that includes the inside of your bones where marrow is produced. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. That's also soft. Yeah, we had never heard of it. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, continue. When I was first diagnosed, and excuse my coughing, I'm so sorry. I actually have no, some no, that's in my okay. lungs now. Um, right. So it's kind of, kind of gets in the way occasionally. But when I was first diagnosed, I actually didn't really have any symptoms. My dog jumped on my foot and he broke my foot. Oh. And I just had this lump that popped up the next day. And I was like, mm, that's weird. So I went to the doctor and my foot was broken. But in the x-ray that they took, they saw this big black just open space in my foot. And they're like, that's not supposed to be there. So then they sent me, actually, they just said, come back in three weeks if it's still bad. Oh, wow. And I did. Waited three weeks. And it got bigger. Oh. And so I went back to the ER, and the ER was like, oh, well, maybe this is just a hematoma under your foot. So they mm -hmm. sent me to wound care. And wound care took three weeks. Oh, so my gosh. So we're wow. starting in January of 2019, mm -hmm. right? Oh, so January okay. of 2019 is whenever I found the lump initially. And right now okay. we're in probably February, mid-March of being told to wait and come back. And so I go to wound care and wound care is like, there's no wound for me to care for. This is, I'm going to send you to podiatry. That was another three weeks. And then podiatry was like, this is wrong. And they took a biopsy of the bottom of my foot okay. and I actually never got a call back from my podiatrist I got a call from Markey Cancer Center saying hey your appointment with your oncologist is xyz and I was like oh I my god don't wow have an oncologist yeah right oh. and I could kind god. of hear the scheduler buffer as she was like oh mm -hmm. I just like yeah, yeah, that that was big, how I found time. out that I had cancer. This is the I'm you're so the second yeah. you are the second person in in like a month that has had the same problem that we've spoken that, that we've we spoke, know of. Yes, I mean, that we've sure spoken to. Right, right, right. Where mm. they got the the word by a phone call. I mean, how rude! I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry for you. Well. Um, I mean, I got the a horrible news about, thing to go through. It, it, it really is. And, like, I got the news about my relapse. Sorry, I'm constantly adjusting things. Um, That's it's okay. okay. It's all right. I got the news about my relapse through my chart. Um, oh, my God. On a Saturday. You need a, you need, you need a better GP that can corral all okay. these yeah. people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually. Okay. Yeah. They, they actually were able to push through something in Kentucky's legislation because of my finding out on Saturday of my relapse. 
Christmas. They were able to push through an amendment to the CARES Act so that um, physicians can hold critical results for up to 72 hours now in Kentucky. So that's been helpful, but not all physicians go by it. Um, So people are still finding out some pretty rough things on days when there's nobody in clinic. Wow. Well, that's a... That's a, a powerful way to start. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of like overwhelmed. overwhelmed. Yeah. Wilder, yeah. what are the symptoms of ARMS typically? Pretty much the symptoms of any other cancer. It's, it, that's kind of why it's so insidious is because a lot of children get it. Um, it's mostly a childhood disease. And I don't think we've ever heard of it. Mm. No. But yeah, is it, mostly is it children. considered a rare a rare cancer, or is it is it common? Um, it's considered rare for adults, but it's common okay. for children. Okay. So that's kind of why it's weird. So I get seen in a pediatric clinic. Um, oh, excuse yeah. me, which is very nice uh, because I get access to art therapy and music therapy and child life, and like all of these um, support like systems and i'd go to Mm -hmm. gilda's club which i don't know if you guys have ever heard of gilda's club there's one in every state it's for how do you spell that uh g-i-l-d-a um apostrophe okay from the gilda redner yeah 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 oh i was gonna say if if anyone should know it it should be the two across the table from me (laughs) but they're both like no yeah yeah no i yeah she was from you know your area right right okay well, Ron and I are Ron and I are recreational therapists, and we believe that everybody should have those tools available to them when they're uh, dealing with any kind of a diagnosis. Yeah. But I'm glad that yeah. they're, they're they're I'm glad that they're offering you those those uh, added on therapies. So, we appreciate. Oh, that. Sure. Can I ask a, a question? Uh, it's kind of a sure. follow up to how common. It is. You said it, it's mainly, mostly in, in, in children. Yes. So they don't really have very much or anything at all for adults. That's why you have to go mm-hmm. to the pediatrics. Wow. Yeah. That, that's um, stunning for one. Right. Um, and I guess as a follow-up to that, I mean, you're obviously older than 18. Um, people that are diagnosed or, you know, in your case, diagnosed a little after the pediatric age, they continue to follow you through the pediatric end? Mm -hmm. I was actually diagnosed at 19. Um, So I was never pediatric whenever um, I was diagnosed. Um, It's just that the specialists, the only people to take care of me would be pediatrics because the Mm -hmm. adult world doesn't touch rhabdo um, because Mm -hmm. rhabdo doesn't really touch the adult world. That's amazing. Um, wow. Is there I, a chance is there a chance that you've had it since childhood and it was just gradually sneaking up on you and maybe because of your, you know, excellent health choices you kept it at bay? Um it you is look it's like genetic. You look like you're in pretty good, you know, oh it oh, is. Okay. Oh, okay. I do um, that it, it yeah. is genetic. Oh. It is genetic, but um I we've tested um members of my family and I'm actually a spontaneous mutation um okay so nobody else in my family um really has the rhabdo gene but when I went down to MD Anderson I actually found out that a lot of adults who end up with rhabdomyosarcoma end up with the fusion positive like super hard to treat the type of like cancer that I've got right now. And it's not quite the exact same type of cancer as what the children get. Um, and it's, and most of the adults that get it are genetic spontaneous mutations. Wow. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. So that's gotta be (laughs) very, very rare or uncommon. I would assume. Yeah. So I like it. Um, about two to three hundred cases per year. Okay. Yeah. Very, 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 very rare. rare. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, Wilder, you said that you received your diagnosis through the biopsy, and um, I was wondering, 
Are there any other steps they needed to take to diagnose your rhabdo? Or is that really the definitive test? Um, so to get to the diagnosis of rhabdomyosarcoma, the mm -hmm. biopsy was all that they needed. But to get okay. to the diagnosis of fusion positive rhabdomyosarcoma, which um, that just entails how hard it is to treat, how many different genes are kind of wrapped up within this cancer, stuff like that. Um, crap, can you restate the question? Because I forgot. My brain went... No, yeah, that's okay. I was just wondering if there were any other tests. So to get to, to find out that it was the fusion positive... Um, Rhabdo. Rhabdo. Did they have to do yes. a genetics test? Yeah. Or? Did, yeah. Okay. They have okay. to do a series and, okay. of like, genetics panels and a liquid biopsy um, and something else that I can't remember. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. And how did your healthcare team finally decide to, to uh, treat you right. with this? And I know that it has metastasized. Uh, do they know where it started and where it's gone and how bad is it right now and how are they treating it? Yeah. Um, so, I was sent down to MD Anderson. Excuse me. I was sent down to MD Anderson because the people at UK who are my local um, physicians kind of ran out of ideas. Um, then MD Anderson put me on a targeted trial and uh, it, it didn't work. And so they sent me back up here and uh, MD Anderson is actually still monitoring my care, but they're uh, allowing UK to do it. Um, okay. So you asked like what the, the progression of all the biopsies, the therapies and all of that was, mm -hmm. right? Right. Okay. Right. So in April, April 16th, actually of 2019, I'll never forget the date um, is whenever I was diagnosed, like officially diagnosed. That was my mom's birthday. Cause of course. Yeah. And they put me on a VAC VI cycle. That's Vin Christine. The one that made me poop a lot. I don't even. Uh, I read it taken. Yeah. It has a nickname. Okay. I run to the can. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cyclophosphamide, which I'm back on currently. Um. And Christine, Tim Zerolimus. Yeah, it was like five drugs for a year. And then I, I was on a maintenance uh, for six months. And that was Tim Zerolimus okay. and then Christine, I want to say. And then I was cancer free for a year and a half. Um, and that oh, was wow. like the first time. Now, okay. I'd also had my leg amputated well, below the knee because they did not think that they could get clear margins within my foot. And I fully agree with them that it was very, very entangled within my foot. I had part of my lung resected because they found scar tissue in the bottom of my lung right when I was starting my maintenance phase. And to be proactive, uh, they just went ahead and removed it. Um, but it was just scar tissue, so that was nice. So then I had a year and a half where I was completely cancer free and I didn't really have to think too much about it, but I still had to go back, you know, every three months for scans and tests and all of that. And then in, oh, I also had radiation. Um, they did radiation um, from September to October on my pelvis because there were cancerous lymph nodes in my pelvis. I forgot about that. And then in yeah, January of 2022, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine in her kitchen in Berea. And we were just talking. And I felt like an itch on my neck. And I was like, okay. that's not an itch. And I just kind of did this. And she saw my face drop. 
like this, Gene. Oh, yeah, no, I am looking over yeah. it. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So yeah. you're like w rubbing it across your collarbone right. area. Yeah, like the collarbone, like right there. I could still yeah. feel. And my, my face just dropped. And she was like, no. And I was like, that's tumor. Um, mm -hmm. And so when it came back, it is around my descending aorta. So that's not fun. <laughs> it's no. a, there's about six centimeters of it that are just completely encasing my descending aorta and could decide to cut it off at any given time. Um, mm -hmm. Thankfully, have decided not to do that. Um, but it's also uh, in the like peritoneal space of my stomach. <laughs> I've got it in my both of my lungs. Uh, my left lung has a malignant pleural effusion, so I actually drain liquid cancer from my chest <coughs> every day. Um, wow! That's cool. Yeah, sounds like something Marvel Super Comics should be doing, huh? Yeah, it really, like really does. Cancer from the yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's. It's back, but the the new chemo that they have me on um, after the targeted therapy at MD Anderson seems to be doing something um, because the tumors that I had in my neck are somewhat smaller. So we are crossing okay. our fingers that it's okay. We can get and somewhat. Are, are any of these uh, are? Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are any of these uh, possible to be surgically removed or? Do they just treat it chemically or radiologically? They have decided to just treat it um, because the one that's right here uh, presses against my jugular too much, um, and they can cut my jugular. Okay. The ones right in here, um, they press against something I wasn't listening, to be honest. Um, Probably a lot of nerves <laughs> back there. Yeah, um, that they don't want to And they don't want to mess with the aorta. Yeah, right. they don't want to mess with this one because the, if they chop any part of my aorta, I'm done. Um, they right. don't want to mess with my peritoneal space because that could mess with future uh, chemo options um, because mm -hmm. they do have peritoneal chemo. It's, yeah, so we've just kind of taken a couple of steps back and been like, all right, retry a couple of previous meds that worked. Okay, starting over. Yeah. All right. So, you know, forgive me for asking this question, but um, what kind of prognosis can someone with ARMS expect? And more importantly, what about your, your medical team? What have they discussed with you, especially yeah. with, with um, your own? So I think the great thing about rhabdo, and it's so weird to say that, um, is that it actually does have a pretty yeah. yeah. Well, you gotta find something. It does yeah. have a pretty good survivability rate whenever uh, you're a kid. Um, hmm. We're talking like 60s to 80s, oh. um, like really high. Okay. Uh, with a pretty low relapse rate, the fusion positivity is what good. decreases my statistics so dramatically. And so the fact that okay. Um, one, my cancer has relapsed multiple times, um, and has, is resistant to so many different types of treatments. My current statistics of survival at five years are, is 7%, but my doctors do not anticipate me being alive at the end of this year. Um, that being said, they didn't anticipate me being alive at the end of last year. So, I mean... Right. It's a give it a take. Yeah. That's that's a hard thing to swallow. Yeah. Especially, I mean, you're so young. Yeah. But is that what inspired you to do TikTok and become, a, you know... An influencer? An, yeah, an influencer yeah. and put your voice out there because, you know, you are you want to inspire well, I others? I want to inspire others, but I also kind of want to leave a legacy. Like leave my voice and my personality yeah, right, behind right. because I know that I'm one of a kind and I know that I'm actually a very funny person. And I, you know, it probably won't come across in this interview because it's, 
very <laughs> solemn and about cancer. But, you know, I take a lot of joy in a lot of different things, and I have a lot of different hobbies. Um, and so being able to kind of put that on a stage, I guess, for the rest of my family to be able to, like, go back and look at whenever I'm gone, that's important to me. Excellent. Sure. Yes. yes. Yeah, and, and the so that the world yeah. gets to know you a bit, too. It's Right. Yeah, it's... That's awesome. What are some of your favorite hobbies? Dog training is my biggest favorite. Um, I actually... Oh, okay. What nice. kind of training? Yeah, dog, I used to train training. service dogs oh. for people. Um, I've actually trained out three, um, two for myself oh, and then wow. one for somebody else. Um, but dog training, it's one of my absolute favorite things. Even though dogs are so hard-headed, I, so am I. And that's why I love it. Um, I love the challenge. I love <laughs> painting. Um, I like doing art therapy a lot. A lot. And lately sleeping has been a hobby. I won't even lie. So, um, yeah, okay. I'm baking. I'm also making just random stuff in the kitchen. It's so much fun to me. You should start putting some of that on TikTok, you know, People baking really get a lot of hits on TikTok. I had a couple of ingredients <laughs> that TikTok doesn't enjoy. And what is your what is your? Fi- oh, okay. okay. Yes, yes. Oh. I, I get it. Yes. Oh, are they? Are they? Oh, mm. oh, I have a story. Oh boy. Okay. I I, I tried to mix I tried to mix mm. some into my brownies. Okay. I'm out. It was chocolate truffles. Okay, chocolate truffles. She tried and, to mix uh, resin. Right. And I didn't know that the resin wouldn't oh, no. come off the wooden spoon. So after I mixed, I licked the wooden spoon and I got the whole 40 doses or whatever. Oh, yeah, I was Flying a high. person that day. And then she didn't know. I didn't know that I did it. Yeah. <laughs> Until she got in the car with our two dogs to take them to daycare and then he had to pull over because <gasps> the dogs didn't know how to drive. Yes. They told That's me beautiful. that they didn't drive. It's amazing. <laughs> So my sister had to go and pick her up and the dogs. And when she, my sister uh, dropped my mom off, she grabbed the bowl and threw it in the garbage. Not again. Said, never again. And I'm not allowed to make no, them. She's not again. allowed to make but, truffles. But yeah, I, I get it. I, I get missed it. this. Oh, 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 you missed it. That yeah, was... She's not allowed to buy resin. <laughs> yeah. She's not allowed to make truffles of any kind. Because we're, we're just overly concerned. What are some um, of your favorite bakes? Gummies, weirdly. Or like is one of the things that okay, I go back to. Cool. Um, no, that's fun. But cupcakes, cupcakes are a lot of fun because you have a oh, lot of yeah. room to do a lot of different stuff with them. Um, mm-hmm. Right, right. I hate baking cookies because I always burn them. Oh. And I never get like oh, okay. anything you, right. But don't use a dark pan. Did you know that that's part of the trick? That's probably my don't problem. Don't use a dark. Yeah, use a light-colored baking pan. Or, or drop the temperature 25 degrees. Okay. No. Yeah, my daughter, by the way, is a, a cordon bleu chef, so gotcha. she could probably say more about it than I could. <laughs> no, yeah, that's why. I'm sorry. I, I was just a bit curious. No, you're um, not. We won't give you any recommendations for chocolate truffles. Trust right. Me, my, my microphone works, but you don't hear me because I have nothing to offer to this conversation. <laughs> Although Dominic over there, our sound engineer in the corner, makes a mean pizza crust. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, Wilder, um, I don't know if your healthcare team has uh, chosen to treat or mitigate your symptoms as well as you have done on your own, mm. um, but how are they taking care of the symptoms of the cancer treatment for you? I'm currently on palliative care um, and have been in palliative since I relapsed. Um, and for me, palliative is significantly different than like hospice and like end of life care because it's within the pediatric, uh, world. So I'm able to continue searching for, uh, therapies and continue like on chemo and stuff like that, um, while receiving like super high dose pain meds, which is very, very nice. And I actually have my port accessed all the time, and I do home fluids and antiemetics whenever I get super, super nauseated and just can't keep anything down. Okay. And I've got a feeding tube 
placed by palliative that actually bypasses my stomach. Um, it goes straight into the ju- 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 that word jejunum. Yeah, 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 ju- yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There we go. Got it. So that my stomach doesn't have to work quite as hard on the days that I've had <laughs> chemo and it doesn't really want to work hard. But yeah, they've got me on some really heavy pain meds. I have a needle in my chest at all times. Uh, I have lots of different tubes. But honestly, I wouldn't change it because I, I recognize how bad I felt before we got palliative on board. I hate that I have, you know, three different tubes sticking out of my body. But I can talk, you know, I can have a conversation um, with you guys. Um, I went from sleeping 18 hours a day, screaming, curled up in a ball on the floor, crying all the time because I just couldn't handle the amount of pain that I was in, um, to being able to drive again. I, uh, you know, I can do interviews with people. I can make TikTok videos. Um, I can play with my dog and train my dog, uh, when I want to. So, right. Right. Good. Excellent. And uh, we were going to ask about how nutrition was a part of your life, but now that we know it's a feed tubing, we'll skip that question. I do also eat orally. So, um, um, oh, okay. 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 So yeah. they didn't take away they didn't take away the ability, but they want to make sure you're getting good enough nutrients. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And especially with the tumor that's like in my esophagus right here. Um, it's kind of pressing against my esophagus Mm -hmm. and at one point was making it really, really hard to swallow. Um, so they wanted to make sure that I had something, um, to be able to kind of get past that area. Okay. So we've been listening to you and I really appreciate, you know, a lot of the explanations that you've been given and kind of the, the whole journey. Um, what's been the most difficult part, do you think? Uh, well, for you, what has been the most difficult part of everything that's been going on? That's a good question. Probably. Oh, no, easily. Um, dealing with egotistical doctors. Um, oh, really? I, yeah. I, I, like, I know that sounds real strange, but... Um, no. No, 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 it doesn't. <laughs> it's how you feel. Yeah. But and, yeah. And, and there are, and there are some that are on high horses. Oh yeah. Um, the one who cut my foot off, um, mm-hmm. claimed that, so I also have another genetic condition. It's a soft tissue condition. It's a connective tissue, uh, disorder. It's called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Um, basically all of yeah. my joints yes. love to dislocate. It's what they do. Um, Mm -hmm. yes, whenever this surgeon went to amputate my foot, I told him that I needed an ankle foot orthotic on my right foot until that ankle got strengthened so that it didn't dislocate while I was standing Mm -hmm. doing PT. He told me Mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. EDS ankles don't dislocate. (laughs) Sir. Oh, okay. Yes, a they week. Do. So, so his two minute. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then, so I was just going to say that his two minute lecture that he had didn't cover everything that you already know. Yep. And so a week a lifetime. after yeah. my amputation, exactly a week, I had just gotten the dressing removed and had like just been able to see underneath of it. Um, I was doing my physical therapy. I fell busted all of my internal sutures, um, and had to go to the ER. The ER did not notice that I busted all of my internal sutures. And so I then developed, um, an infected hematoma that I had to go and get my amputation revised, um, because of, because this one doctor would not give me an AFO, but like, it's just chronic. Something Like, Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. like, I need this antiemetic medication because I've been vomiting for so much of my life that Zofran does not work anymore. Mm-hmm. And I get told, okay, we're going to do Haldol instead. And I'm like, yeah, 
no, please no. That makes me apathetic because, like, um, oh. it will literally make me psychotic. Um, most antipsychotics, mm-hmm. because of my MTHFR mutation, will make me psychotic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so then when I ask for Phenergan, they'll be like, no, that's a heavy medication. But then give me Compazine. Um, and do oh. nothing about, you know, me wanting to rip my skin off of my face. Um, oh. it's just, it's chronic, that level of just bickering. Do you ever, are, are, are you ever invited or do you ever request to speak at local hospitals or at medical schools? Mm-mm. Um, because I, I, it feels like they could learn, uh, like, you know, me- people that are in medical school right now could learn an awful lot from you. And people who um, need more um, empathy for their empathy patients. and yes. and realization that, you know, somebody that's been living with something for a while may know a bit more um, could all use your insight. Yeah, I honestly, the closest that I get to that is. Um, UK is a teaching hospital, so they have a lot of students. Okay. Um, and I okay. get asked often, you know, do you mind if this student comes in? Do you mind if that student comes in? Um, mm-hmm. And my mm-hmm. answer is always yes, because I'm always the patient that, okay. like, I want students right. to come in on. Because, like, mm-hmm. I looked one of them in the face the other day and asked him, have you ever felt a cancerous tumor with your own two hands? And he just looked at me for a second. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I'm serious. Have you ever felt a cancerous tumor with your own two hands? And he was like, no. And I was like, do you want to? And he kind of, he looked at his preceptor and his preceptor was like, do you want to? Um, And Mm -hmm. so I let him feel my neck and kind of let him kind of play with the less (laughs) serious one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and then so did his preceptor, because apparently his preceptor had never gotten that opportunity either. Nobody had offered, hey, oh, do you want to touch wow. this cancer in my neck? Like, yeah. And then some random 23 year old can't, comes along. So. Mm-hmm. And who knows how many, you know, lives Could you're going to save right. just from that. And yeah. hopefully they will go on to encourage others. Oh, Amazing. Yes. Yeah. Me? Just we're we're just really really um, inspired. You you are utterly inspiring, and um, I was just wondering if uh, are there any support groups for um, because this is a typically pediatric condition. Are there any support groups that you can have access to or kind of um... anything of that nature? Okay. There's one rhabdo specific support group on Facebook. Um, okay. But it is primarily parents and like okay. some adults who get diagnosed with rhabdo. But mm-hmm. if you're an adult with rhabdo in that group, you often get talked over. Um, which makes no sense to me. Um, no, because no, they all. could, you know, especially if you have a child with it and you and you want to know what your child's feeling, what right. would help, right. I would think they would want to listen to you. Exactly. Um, but if I, you know, am like, hey, you know, I had radiation in the exact same area. Your kid is probably showing discomfort that you can't figure out because of this, this, and this, mm-hmm. because those are issues that I had. Um, and then this parent's mad because they're like, well, don't bring my kid's genitals into it. And I'm like, you are on a Facebook group about cancer, talking about your right. own child's genitals right. being radiated. Like, right. yeah. And I, yeah, <laughs> their, their child might not be able to verbalize their right. discomfort. Right. Yeah. It's just like, well, it's... we're on your side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It just right over their head. Huh? Yeah. And I I guess that's another reason why, you know, on TikTok, you can, you know, thoroughly go through something and you won't have anyone interrupting. And hopefully parents will seek you out as a resource. Yeah, the trolls come out. No, I know, but I just hope that they seek that as a resource because 
I think they can, you know, great. They not only can they benefit, but their children can benefit as well. True. Yeah. So thank you for doing that, Wilder. Right. Wilder, what do you think is the most um, misunderstood part of this disease? Um, people think it's funded. Uh, people think that it's funded. Yeah. Like oh. for research. Yeah. Oh, um, and it's not. No. The. Oh maximum amount of money that has been put into sarcoma research was oh this might make me cry was actually raised by a friend of mine who passed recently oh. who also had rhabdo she created a rhabdo fund um and people donated to it and that is the only rhabdo myosarcoma wow. fund that there is um, like, oh my God. Wow. they're, you know, <laughs> the government pays in and will occasionally pay into sarcomas. Um, but childhood cancer gets less than 4% of all government funding for, uh, cancer research. And so you can kind of imagine where rhabdo falls within that 4%. Uh, it's considered a widow maker in adults for for a good reason. Um, it really, really sucks. It sure yeah, does. It does. Um, well, hopefully, um, because it is like a global, you know, it's it's known globally. Hopefully, there are other countries that are supporting research and um, will share their information. Right, right. Like uh, the UK. UK. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. we talked to. Uh, a woman from the UK that is a a very big um, advocate for raising funds for research on mm -hmm. different cancers. So we'll make sure that she gets a copy of this episode as well. Right. Um, now that we've discussed the basics of this um, diagnosis, I think our listeners have a better understanding of this condition. In order to better serve our guests and listening audience, we're now working as an affiliate with a major medical supply warehouse located here in the United States. You'll find our links on our website. Our goal is to tailor specific medical supplies and equipment based on individual diagnoses and needs to make it less stressful when they're looking through, rather than looking through an entire catalog to find what you need. We're open to your suggestions and we'll adjust our offerings based on what you, your, our guests and our listeners find helpful but back to our show and, uh, and actually wilder i have a question okay do you have a <clears throat> favorite flavor flavor of just anything 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 like just vanilla chocolate strawberry orange like your favorite flavor lime is my go-to lime lime yeah do okay you, okay do you like key lime do you like key lime pie yes I okay. love key lime. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why she's asking, but she's okay. she's got something up her sleeve. Yeah. Um, Wilder, do alternative therapies such as massage therapy, acupuncture, heat, or ice help alleviate any symptoms? Yes, actually. Um, excuse me again. Um, that was actually one of the things that I was talking to palliative care about on my last um, appointment. Um, is I'm actually going back okay. to physical therapy. Uh, even though I have an incurable cancer because they were mm -hmm. able to make my shoulders and my back feel so much better. Um, part of my amputation was going to massage therapy um, and having that scar tissue mm -hmm. broken down. And it's one of the only reasons yeah. that I don't have extreme phantom pain. Um, I did Reiki which, you know, some people believe in, some people don't. I loved it. Um, it was very helpful, very useful to my life um, for my anxiety and my pain. There was something else that I did at the cancer center that was considered alternative. It wasn't acupuncture. Eh, I don't remember. But um, ultimately, like, nothing alternative is going to, like, cure the cancer. But... It mm -hmm. definitely no, but helps. if it helps you get through the day, yeah, it helps right. with the anxiety. It can help with the pain. It can help with, you know, the scars, 
being angry and mad. Um, uh, you know, a heating pad can get you through that one hour whenever you're having that bad spasm, that type of thing. Um, mm-hmm. It's a good tool. It's definitely a really good tool. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for sharing that. I guess another question would be, what are some of the, I guess, less apparent parts of your life that have been affected? I mean, you've done a, a very good job of explaining mm-hmm. what's going on, but what about some of the, the smaller things or something that's not as obvious? I mean, my romantic life. You know, I'm 23. Mm-hmm. Uh, I should have a boyfriend, or I should be interested in other people, Mm -hmm. and other people should be interested in me, and that's, that just doesn't exist. One, because I'm seen as a lost cause, because, you know, well, why should I put emotion into him if he's just going to die of cancer? Um, That whole, like, fault in our stars uh, idea. Secondarily, I also have the, like mindset of why put the energy into it if it may not work out in the end um and i know that if i didn't have cancer that i wouldn't have that mindset that i would just be proceeding on track as you know a normal 23 year old um Mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't think about you know the fact that I don't have a partner and I don't have somebody sitting next to me holding my hand through every hospital stay. It's my mother. Um, And you have to consider (laughs) like the years upon years upon years of things that happened before when it's family um, versus, you know, a significant other that's sitting with you in the hospital. Right. Um, Right. But yeah, I think that, like the romantic side of things is one of the biggest that people just don't consider. Absolutely. I'm thinking that maybe one alternative way of looking at things is today you're here in front of us. You're looking good. You're feeling good. Today is today. And what difference does it make about tomorrow? Because you got to make the best of what you got today, and but we understand, and that, that includes it's challenging. Yeah, it, yeah. It, so you might want to go ahead and put yourself out there, and or even like group art classes, and, right? Yeah. Right, and and socialize with people. But yeah, but we understand. Yeah, yeah. It's it's hard. Yeah. And you said that your mom has been going with you for treatments, and yeah. that one of your friends has. Um, yeah, raised significant amount for, or raised money for um, cancer research. Um, mm, what other gone. roles have family? Yeah, she's, I know. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. we lost her. Um, but what other roles have friends have you know your friends and family played during this journey? Um, pretty much any role you can think of. I mean, from mm-hmm. charity to just family member I like I don't don't know how to explain it I guess um Mm -hmm. because my extended family hasn't really they're not very touchy-feely like none of my family is um they'll send money and I'll get texts Mm -hmm. uh which is really not my way of needing support like that's their way of satiating their I need to support you but that's not like the support that I need Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. mostly the good support comes from like my mom my immediate friends that are like within like 50 miles of where I live um and honestly like a couple of online uh, groups because uh, like I said other than that my family just kind of wants to support me how they have in their mind um, mm-hmm. and if I kind of try to be like that's actually not helpful at all can we take a step back and do something else um, it causes arguments so that's hard well, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm glad that you have you know your mom there and your friends there 
um, you know. Yeah, I mean, what you're just saying, that's really got to be playing. We can tell on the video. I mean, you look a, a bit stressed even talking about it. It's really got to be uh, playing on your emotions all the time. Is, yeah. is part of palliative care emotional support? Yes. Yeah. Is they, psychological um, support? Okay. They actually just got me in with a grief counselor uh, last week, um, and I'm seeing okay. her for the first time next week. Um, yeah. So, and I mean, I was, I had gotten in with a grief counselor at Gilda's, uh, Gilda's club, but I just wasn't really vibing. Um, and that was right before I went to Texas the first time. Um, okay. and I was in Texas every other week whenever I was on that trial. So like I could not do wow. anything, um, at all. I was stressed. Oh, sure. And what about um, a death doula? I've considered. Um, they okay. The uh, my not nurse manager, mm-hmm. social worker. That's who it is. My social worker. Okay. Yeah. Um, has brought up mm-hmm. the concept of a, a death doula a couple of times. Um, okay. Because she feels like it would be helpful for my family, and I agree. I just don't know where to get started on that type of thing, honestly, because like that's one of right, those right. Okay. new well, they, resources. Yeah, they'll probably help guide you. Yeah. Do, does your is your mom uh, is she able to get some type of counseling as well? Because this has to be so hard for her. She's able to. She doesn't want to. Okay. okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's the unfortunate part. Right. Okay. What role has self care played in your uh, journey? It's been very important. Um, it's been the only thing that keeps me sane uh, some days because knowing that I can go to the store and buy myself that silly little $2 mud mask and put on the silly little $2 mud mask. <laughs> And, like, go around <laughs> my house in this robe and, like, act like I'm some rich celebrity. Like, yeah. 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 That can give me eight weeks of serotonin for two bucks. Mm-hmm. So, like, there yes, you go. absolutely. But at the same time, I, re- I also recognize that when I stop taking care of myself and when I stop, like, checking in with my own emotions... And I stopped checking in with, like, my EMDR techniques and all of that. My cancer mm-hmm. actually grows more. It gets more rapid. Um, and my symptoms get oh. worse. Um, and wow. it's it's a direct correlation that all of us have seen. And it's super strange. Um but it's also happened to a lot of other people that I talk to. They say that they get under intense stress and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. their cancer is just unmanageable. Um, sure. Right. The inflammation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you found a couple of things that, that work for you. That's, you know, some people don't even have that realization that, oh, if I try this, that may help. But yeah. Kudos to you. Mm-hmm. And Wilder, what advice do you have for someone recently diagnosed or uh, someone whose friend or family member has been diagnosed recently? Don't worry too much about <laughs> statistics, as ridiculous okay. as that sounds, um, because mm-hmm. there are so many new interventions coming out every single day that I I don't think Rabdo is going to continue being a problem for much longer. Because um, they have, like, the new antigen peptide vaccine, which mm-hmm. incredibly useful against Rabdo. They just have no trials for it currently. Um, the MDM2 uh, inhibitors that I was on, which I could just do a whole TED talk on 
those are going to be incredibly important in the next coming years uh, in controlling cancers, um, in controlling genetic cancers specifically. Um, the biggest thing is just don't worry about five years from now. Worry about tomorrow and getting through those symptoms of today um, because your doctors can tell you that there's no interventions all they want. Um, you, something will end up popping up um, because like right. we at the end of 2022, I was told that I would be on hospice by March or April of 2023 uh, because they had no treatment options for me nothing um a week later they got a call back from md anderson saying that they had five different trial options for me um wow so never like never just throw that towel and be like okay this is it i give up unless that's where you are in your journey and you want to be done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good response yeah. Thank you. Wilder, before we wrap up this episode, could you please tell us how we can learn more about you and your journey? I know that your TikTok account is uh, Q-U-E-E-R-P-P-L-E, -E -E, and I will put a link on our website. Do you also use Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook? Um, I do. I kind of, I'm most active on um, TikTok, though. TikTok and Facebook okay. are where right. you can catch me the most. Um, and right. Instagram. And what's your what's your Facebook handle? Uh, it's just my name. Is Wilder your McNamer. handle the same across all the platforms? Um, huh? My Facebook name is Wild, Wilder McNamer. It's just my name. Um, okay. okay. And then across, like, Instagram and all of that, it's Queerpool, which is Queer Cripple. Um, people always okay. read it as queer people, but it's queer cripple. I was, I read it as queer apple. <laughs> oh, that's a good one too. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Sorry, I guess, I guess I'm always hungry. <laughs> but yeah, TikTok and Facebook. All right. Yeah. So, uh, thank you so much for, for joining our show today. It's very, uh, we learned quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We learned yeah. quite a bit from yeah. your story. Thank and you I'm for sure sharing. that our listeners will too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you, Wilder. If our listeners have any questions or comments related to today's show, they can contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com, through our website, podcastdx.com, on Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok, YouTube, or even Instagram. And if you have a moment to spare, please give us a review wherever you get your podcast. As always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, and always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new health care regime, and never disregard professional advice, um, medical advice, or delay in, seeking, delay in seeking it because of something you've heard in this podcast, and don't make chocolate truffles with serum <laughs> or resin. Until next week. <laughs>